to try and receive a stimulus check designed to help out small businesses. They become the first two people charged for stealing coronavirus loans in the country. Brandon Gano, live in the newsroom with details on what they tried to do. Brandon. And right in our backyard, this all started with a tip from police. Investigators say it uncovered a scheme between two businessmen to steal money meant for struggling small businesses. The FBI raiding a Rhode Island restaurant believed to be involved in a scheme to take advantage of the CARES Act. It was all a sham in order to get a cut of the cash from this brand new taxpayer funded program. A man from Andover and another from Warwick, Rhode Island are the first in the nation charged with lying to get federal coronavirus money they do not qualify for. They're charged with trying to defraud more than half a million dollars from the Paycheck Protection Program. At a time when this country should be coming together, Stavely and Butziger decided to take advantage of the pandemic for their own personal benefit. According to court documents, one man applied for loans for two restaurants, the Remington House in Warwick and On the Tracks in Berlin. Both closed before the COVID-19 pandemic. He is also accused of applying for a loan for the Top of the Bay in Warwick, even though he was not involved with that restaurant. The FBI says the Rhode Island man also filed an SBA loan for a non-existent business, claiming he had seven full-time employees to pay. Today's arrests should be a warning to others. The FBI will not tolerate bad actors who are utilizing the COVID-19 crisis as an opportunity to commit fraud. Investigators say the men were caught before they could get any of that money, but both have been released yesterday. In the newsroom, I'm Brandon Gano, 7 News, Today in New England. In Holyoke, a group of senators calling now for a review of practices that led to the deaths of dozens of veterans at the home. The senators, including Elizabeth Warren and Ed Markey, say that they want to examine the U.S. Department's of Veterans Affairs oversight at all state veteran-run homes. 80, 84 residents at the Holyoke Soldiers' Home have died in recent weeks, but some of those deaths are not COVID-19 related. A local company is expanding its service to dispensary deliveries. The owner says it's convenient now more than ever, now that we're right in the middle of a pandemic. Seven's John Coco is live with all of the details for us. John? It's not easy to build a, a logistics technology kind of delivery software company, so that's, that's where we're the experts. A software company with a focus on front door deliveries of medical marijuana. Well, I think love convenience, they love privacy, they love um, having access to products that they don't have to leave their homes to get. Meredith Mahoney is the president of the marijuana delivery service, Lantern. The Boston-based company launched right before the pandemic, but it's been in the works for years. We wanted to make sure that we could handle the influx of orders and new customers that we knew we would need to service in this time. Lantern is a third-party service between the buyer and dispensary, never touching the product. All of the um, kind of financial transaction and the delivery and the relationship with the customer is really between the customer and the dispensary. As of right now, only medical marijuana can be delivered. The Cannabis Control Commission is expected to expand that availability to recreational marijuana. But the recreational business has been halted in Massachusetts, and Governor Baker has refused to allow those shops to stay open during his stay-at-home order. Making those sites available to anybody from the Northeast would cut completely against the entire strategy we're trying to pursue here in Massachusetts to keep people safe. And the state does allow medical marijuana dispensaries to operate their own delivery services, but less than half do. We're live in Boston. John Coco, 7 News, Today New England. Governor Baker is easing some retail restrictions, allowing one Mother's Day staple to be open for business. Florists can now fill orders. The move coming just in time for Mother's Day on Sunday. The stores will have to keep their doors closed to customers, and only a limited number of employees can be working at one time. Also, car dealerships can resume sales with those restrictions in place. Get mom flowers or a car. Good options, right? Both would make her smile. JetBlue and Spirit Airlines suspending service now to more than a dozen airports across the country. The Department of Transportation has approved airlines' request to stop flying out of 16 large cities, including Chicago, Atlanta, and Philadelphia through the end of September. Flights in and out of Boston, however, are expected to continue. JetBlue says the service cuts are a result of low demand for the flights. A national meat shortage has some Wendy's locations asking, where's the beef? 
The company says nearly 1,000 Wendy's locations aren't serving up hamburgers, which is about one in five restaurants. Many meat suppliers have temporarily closed their factories because they're seeing a spike in COVID-19 cases. And the coronavirus is leading to a spike in gun sales. The FBI says it conducted nearly 3 million background checks in April. It's the fourth highest month for background checks since the FBI started keeping data in 1988. That number is down from March when the agency conducted a record 3.7 million background checks. New York City is reporting an increase in hate crimes against Asian Americans. Police say that there were 14 hate crimes last month alone. One included a woman who says she was attacked with acid while taking out her trash. City leaders believe many of the cases are related to COVID-19. Stay with the news station for more complete coverage on the coronavirus emergency. You can find the latest updates on air, online, and on our 7 News mobile and tablet apps. We're following more news today. A black man chased and killed in a Georgia neighborhood. The men accused of shooting him say they believed he was a burglary suspect. But newly surfaced video shows the man was only out for a jog. And now many are calling for justice. A disturbing video posted online this week showing the final moments of a man's life as he struggles with the people who shot him. That scene spurring protest in the Georgia community where it happened. Make no rest! Make no rest! The crowd calling for justice for 25-year-old Ahmad Arbery, who was out for a run when he was killed back in February. The father and son who shot him say they thought he looked like a suspect in some nearby break-ins. They say that they were attempting a citizen's arrest and acting in self-defense. Arbery was unarmed. Now that they've seen the video, his family says they never doubted his innocence. Because we know his character, we knew what kind of young man he was. And we knew that he was humble. And we knew that he was mannerable and respectful. So when it happened, it took us all off because that's not a mod the person that they were trying to make him out to be. Arbery's family, along with the NAACP, are calling for charges for the men responsible for his death. One of those men is a former police officer. It's literally unheard of for anyone to take another person's life in a case that is not clear self-defense and they not be arrested. A Georgia district attorney says he expects to present the case to a grand jury for possible charges. People in the community continuing to call for justice for Arbery, including the county sheriff. Am I upset that it has taken this long for a verdict, a justice part to come? As the sheriff, I'm upset. Thank you. It shouldn't have taken that long. As if that was my son, I'd be upset. Oh, a lawyer for Arbery's family says the man who shot him should be taken into custody until a grand jury can indict them. Right now, Georgia courts are banned from impaneling grand juries because of the pandemic. Also on 7, a community is mourning the loss of a mother who was killed in a deadly fire in Hanson. The fire department says that the woman was trapped inside of this home when it caught fire on Monday night. Three other people were inside. They were able to get out safely. East Bridgewater School District says that the woman worked as a substitute teacher there for years. 20 minutes before the 8 o'clock hour. Up next on Today in New England, a laptop in need of a fix. But when a local college student couldn't come pick it up, shop, toss it out. For help, he turned to Chris Anderson in 12-7. Glad we could help out. And a Patriots player, good news here, cleared to return to his career and the football field. The latest on David Andrews. Clear sky is starting off with sunshine over the Braintree split throughout much of southern New England. Clouds increase today and we'll track some rain tonight. Forecast ahead.